We've got to embrace that, haven't we? Yes, and if you watch Breakfast regularly, you'll be familiar with the incredible journey of the three dads walking. Mike, Andy and Tim became friends and campaigners when they walked 300 miles to raise awareness after they each lost a daughter to suicide. Well, now the story of their walk has been turned into a book. It's based on journal entries written during their time on the road. Our reporter, Alison Freeman, caught up with them. Never in a million years would I have ever imagined my youngest daughter, Beth, taking her own life. However, on the 28th of March, 2020, she did just that. Sophie had been a lovely little girl with blonde hair and a ready smile. She loved to be with people. We spent loads of time outdoors, walking, biking and skiing. Just a lovely person. I found a note from Emily which she placed in her cloth shopping bag. The last thing I'd like to ask of you is that don't be ashamed of what I've done. I don't mind if people know about what happened to me, if it'll help them before it's too late. It's always been about walking and talking. And now the three dads have put their stories into their own words. A book and an audio book about how they came into each other's lives and the effect they have had on the lives of others goes on sale this week. Walking through the village on a road I knew so well, with blokes I barely knew, it felt strange that I wouldn't be returning home for over two weeks. The book is called Three Dads Walking, 300 Miles of Hope, and charts the ups and downs of their first walk between their three homes in Cumbria, Greater Manchester and Norfolk. Can I get a bit more comfortable for you? The blister situation was getting serious, but the Cumbrian was to prove that he was made of stern, if not a little grumpy stuff. And whilst the walking has now turned into campaigning for greater education to help with suicide prevention, the stories of the dad's daughters have always been at the heart of everything. For those who know the pain of suicide, know that there is a way forward. For those that have thoughts of suicide, know there is help. You are never alone. There is always hope. Alison Freeman, BBC News. We are joined now by Mike. Andy and Tim. Morning. 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 The book is basically notes from your journey, isn't it? And looking back at it now, I, I love the way you say, it's actually really good. <laughs> 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 Are you surprised by how much you learnt during that time? Absolutely. Yeah. From the moment we stepped out of that first, you know, Andy's village hall, meeting first suicide brief mom. It was like, wow, that was a journey. So there was a journey within a journey. So massive amounts of learning went on between the three of us. We learned yeah, so yeah. much. <laughs> we, we, we started as, you know, we didn't really know each other. We were three bereaved dads and we were, you know, we, we were deep in grief as well. But as soon as we started walking, started to meet other people with their own stories, bereaved parents, sadly, you know, everything developed and it was a, it was a learning curve through the whole walk. So it was, it was a bit of a fluke that we actually captured it all as well. I was just yeah. going to say, yeah. how did you know to do that? Well, we didn't. We just, we just had a couple of journals, didn't yeah. we? Um, and scribbled things down at the end of the day. But because of the stuff we were doing and, and the things that you were doing with, with Breakfast supporting us, we were capturing a lot of videos and lots of conversations. Yeah. And so we had all this stuff that just mm. we got by accident. And, Mike, how much had you forgotten? Because so much happened in a, in a, in a short <laughs> space of time. So yeah. then looking through the video and the journals and things, you know, like, that happened and we need to put that in. And, uh, there must have been a lot that you forgot. Until oh, there's probably you more chapters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it, it was powerful. There were things you forgot. We, we wrote them down yeah. a, a, every evening. You know, but it also is it's a story of a walk as well. It, you know, there's a, there's a walking book in there too. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Actually, it's a walking book too, because the walk, the surroundings, the scenery and the people were so much a part of your journey, weren't they? Yeah, the, the walk was incredible. The actual views that we saw inside of Cumbria, yeah. the clouds, we saw quite a, we saw a lot of clouds, yeah. <laughs> but parts of the walk that we weren't expecting, the, the sea wall towards Boston and round there, we weren't expecting that to be... We just thought boring, but it, it wasn't. It was beautiful. It was in a different way. Every day was life. different, yeah. wasn't it? Well, the thing that, that struck me, it struck me since on, on both the walks, people have keep go, going asking, what was your favourite bit? Mm. And what they're asking is, what was the nicest bit of the country? But the answer is always the people we've met. Mm. And it was the people that make the difference. Yeah. 
I've got to say, when we wrote the book, we have put a lot of descriptions in of where we went as well, just mm -hmm. to give them a bit of background colour. But it was the people that, that uh, defined the walk. And what was the trick of the walk about people? We were discussing this earlier, weren't we? The idea that because you're a walker, you're all heading in one direction, you're not really looking at each other. Mm -hmm. You can talk in a really unconfrontational way. You can just discuss these things out in the open in beautiful countryside. You definitely, the stories that we heard were really, really powerful, really emotional stories. But the act of walking, we weren't looking, as you say, at each other mm. in the face. We got the open countryside. It was often raining or sunny. We were navigating, trying not to get lost. <laughs> so we got all this stuff going on, as well as hearing these really powerful stories. Mm. And there's very therapeutic to walk and talk, massively, massively important. Mm. Mm. And I know what you have done, we saw images of you actually recording the audiobook. What was that experience like? Well, that was really surreal. Yes. But the, you saw on the, the video there, we were shut in this little tiny cupboard. It, it's, it was just no bigger than a desk, big enough to have a, um, an iPad and a, and a mic and a soundproof box. And you're looking through a glass at the producer. But to sit there and read out loud for two days was a very weird experience. You know, when was the last time we, you actually read out loud? You know, maybe to your kids when they're, when they're smaller. They actually gave you the smallest box, though. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to say. <laughs> but it was emotional, wasn't it? The, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Recounting the stories, reading the stories of your girls, reading yeah. the stories of other people that we'd met, mm. the journey that we've been on, you know, finding out mm. that suicide's the biggest killer of our young people yeah. under 35. So recounting all that again, some of it mm. was like living it again for the first yeah. time. So it was emotional. I had a few tissues in my booth. Yeah, you're, it right, was, you're right, softy, though. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, the, the, it was really nice to actually read the book. I, I, hadn't, I hadn't read what these two had ri written until Christmas when we saw the very first, f the, the draft. And um, that was when I decided it was a good book, actually. It was like, <laughs> this, this is actually, it was, because there's, there's so much in it, in terms of emotion. Um, lots of, um, yeah, stuff that does generate tears, And even though you laughter. spent so much time together on the road, you still learnt stuff about each other oh, yeah. from hearing that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Re reading my. Hey, well, he keeps calling me grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we've already had that conversation know, this morning. Is, is he really grumpy? <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> we're, we're, we're very different characters. Remember, we didn't know each other, really. This is about, about the third time we'd met when we started the walk, you know, mm. but, um, you know, I don't want to... <laughs> we learnt a lot about each other, but we have the utmost respect for each other as well, because we, we know each other, what, he, what we're going through. You know, the grief of losing a daughter to suicide is, you know, it, it's beyond anything I could... You know, it's so hard. Mm. You know, but knowing these two guys are there and they feel the same as myself, you know, it was uh, powerful. And where is your campaign up to? I know your campaign... <laughs> yes. We're a bit stalled at the moment. You um, should explain, this is so that suicide prevention yeah. goes on the curriculum in schools. That's right, so it's a compulsory part of the curriculum. So we spent... Last year, we spent so much time in Westminster, didn't we, talking yeah. to civil servants and ministers. Um, so we've got involved in the review of the RHA, RSHE curriculum. So that's happened. We know they've written uh, a, 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 a new curriculum, which was due to come for public consultation before Christmas, and it hasn't. Uh, it was going to come to public consultation after Christmas, and it hasn't. We had a meeting with Damien Hines, who's the new schools minister in January, who said the process is still going on. Uh, nothing's happened. Uh, so we did... Uh, we, we wrote to him, actually, about a week ago, 10 days ago, to say, yeah. people are going to ask us this question on this next walk, what would you like us to say? And he's not come back to us. So it's yeah. stuck, we don't know. And it was interesting, two days ago, the NAS UWT saying that they want suicide prevention training for their yeah. teachers, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about a whole school approach yeah. for teachers, for parents, and for the children. Yeah. Yeah. Get everyone yeah. talking on the same page. And there is another walk, isn't there? Oh, yes. So this, Two so, weeks today? Yes. <laughs> <Wow>. yes. <laughs> We're starting in Stirling, Edinburgh, then kind of Newcastle, Leeds, Hull, uh, Boston, and then on to, to Norwich. To Norwich. So it's down the eastern side of the UK, about five, just over 500 miles. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, you. It's so nice to see you all. Thank you for coming yeah, in. Thank you. Well. Thank you. I hope the feet are OK. We'll there was fine. that shot of the blisters <laughs> in the VT there that... Yeah, not, good. <laughs> yeah, not, not good. Good luck, lads. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we should say three dads walking, 300 miles of hope is out tomorrow.